Well, hello everyone. This is Rick Prasik, the Flyfish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Today we'll be tying a little caddis, uh, kind of caddis grub. Um, it's uh, got some CDC in the front to, to act as little legs. When it gets wet, it looks excellent looking fly when it gets wet. Looks kind of nice when it's uh, when it's dry, but when this thing gets in the water and gets wet and that CDC sl uh, slicks back, it looks absolutely dead. And it looks like a, like a, like I said, like a caddis kind of grub. So, uh, uh, fairly easy to tie again, like I normally do. Uh, underbody weight, um, if you like. Um, I can't remember if I tied this one with underbody weight or not, but um, I think I did. Um, and they work, like I said, uh, you get them nice and heavy, a tungsten bead at the head, underbody weight, just get down really quick, um, and just nymph them, right? Czech nymph, Polish nymph, European nymph, whatever you... Uh, uh, whatever style you like right but uh, yeah you want these right on the bottom they work in fast fast water pocket water and they work in tail outs as well so all righty let's get time all righty so in the vise today we have a hens bl554 in a size eight uh, it's a merger clink hammer emerger hook but well, it's actually not a clink hammer it's a emerger hook uh, i ran out of my arex emerger hooks that's why i'm using the hens one um <clears throat> so i use a a, a good heavy um uh, merger pattern here uh, a merger hook sorry i know it's not uh this isn't an emerger it's a it's going to be a heavy bodied uh, uh um uh caddis but i like the shape of these so <clears throat> for the uh thread going to be using some semperfly classic waxed in adot and wood duck um for the uh for weight i'm going to be using some semperfly Sticky back flat lead. Put a couple of layers of that under to help with the shape. Um, for the uh, um, the body is going to be the, the wood duck color. And then over top of that, I'm going to go with some of this uh, nymph body wrap in the clear. Scud back, if you want to call it that. Okay. And then as a rib, I'm going to use this hen's body glass. It's kind of a orangey brown, kind of. Um, and oh, I forgot to put my bead on. I'm going to put uh, a uh, little, just a, a tungsten bead on here. It's not a huge one. I uh, don't really need that much extra weight because I'm be, I am going to be putting a couple of layers of the flat lead on. So, but yeah, there we go. And then for the uh, collar, I'm going to be using some hens uh, brown CDC. So, okay, let's get her going here. So just start your thread. Actually, no, you don't start your thread. My mind's all over the place today. I've been, I'm doing, uh, I'm trying to get five or six videos done. We're still down here in Mexico, but we're going to be leaving soon and taking about a month to head back to uh, Alberta to go visit my son and then over to Vancouver to visit buddies and mother-in-law and, and stuff. And then we're going to head back down to Baja. So, but uh, yeah, so I'm, Trying to get enough videos up for you guys so I don't have to worry about it while I'm on the road. So my head's a little scrambled. So I'm just going to go about three quarters of the way down. And I'm going to put on this flat lead. Slightly overlapping each one. Each wrap. All the way right to the front. right behind that bead just break that off and then I'm going to go about halfway out there do the same thing it's giving me you know, that little bit of a hump there and break that off so okay that adds quite a bit of weight to it plus that tungsten bead for rocking now we put the, the thread on so now what you want to make sure you do here is you want to completely cover this lead. You don't want to see it at all. You're going to completely cover this up with the brown thread, this wood duck. Now, you can do this in chartreuse, you can do this in this wood duck, you can do this in black and white, and whatever color you think is the appropriate color for the streams that you're going to be fishing this in. Um, you want to try to match them to a certain degree. Um, and this is this, whatever thread color you use is going to show through 
the the uh, clear scud back, right? So just want to make sure that you're you're covering all as much as this lead as possible. Try to get a fairly smooth body. That's why you want to use a like a classic wax or something like this with a nano silk. This would take forever. And I love the colors in the classic waxed anyway. So, okay. So now I'm going to take my my little rib here. Sorry, you want to go back up, and I'm going to stick it right there. And then really tight, lay this up along the side here. And again, making sure that's, get that out of the way with my magnet, make sure that's all nicely covered. Not gonna really see that through it anyway, but it's just nice to make sure it is covered. Come back to the back end here. I'm gonna take my scud back or my nymph skin, whatever you want to call it, cut a point. Tie this in by the point. Just catch it in by the point there. Now I'll have to admit this stuff that I'm using is not the best quality. This is stuff I bought out of a, off a AliExpress, the Chinese uh, Amazon just testing it and it's not the best so I can't stretch it as much as I'd like but if you want some really good nymph skin type material go check out uh, Brian at Flysmith he's got some amazing stuff so cut that off. Now I'm going to bring my magnifying glass around because I'm blind. And then I'm going to try to match my turns here as best as I can. They're not going to be perfect. I know that for sure. But I'm just giving it some segmentation. Right behind that bead, tie that off. Get magnifier out of the way. Got a good pull. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna make a dubbing loop. Now you can tie the CDC feather in just by this its tip and uh, like you're doing hackle if you want. Um, I like doing it in a loop myself. I just find that it uh, gives me slightly better result. Just giving a little half hitch so I don't knock it off. Put my dubbing tool in. I will have to. Uh, Select a feather or two, depending on your CDC, how thick it is. I usually like doing two. There's one you can see I already used half. Grab that one. And let's grab that one there. Two that I've already used half of. So I'm just stacking them on top of each other. Maybe. Okay, then I'm going to grab my tool. Prepped it and cut it off. Take my uh, wax. Give it a bit of wax. Just to help the CDC stick. Now, I'm not doing it on the video just because of time, but I would coat this with a UV resin, a real thin coat, a nice thin UV resin. Um, you don't want this stuff to, oh, I just broke my 
dubbing loop. I broke my dubbing loop. What a big deal. We'll just make another one. Yeah, I just don't, I don't want to do it on camera. The, uh, the, uh, putting the, um, oh, my brain, UV resin on. So. Okay, try this again. a lot so beauty so now I'm gonna start stroking it back yeah, I just want to make a little collar here when these get wet this will make it look like little legs sticking out been tying a lot of uh, tropical patterns and bigger patterns and I've been using a lot of nano silk so I'm used to yanking on it and it doesn't break um, can't do that with the classic waxed it's great thread but it's not nano silk cut that off put a couple of drops of head cement in there and we are done that's that's the fly it's uh I said it when this gets wet, these it slicks back and just gets really buggy looking, right? Um, and like I said, I would definitely make sure you uh, you do a coating on your on your body though. Um, just like I said, I don't didn't want to do it now because it makes it uh, I take it takes more time because I have to let it dry properly and stuff and just yeah. So there's another one I did it right. Now, if you want to, you could take a little bit of orange thread and put a little orange hot spot right behind the bead, right? Just a couple of three wraps or so, and then you'd be done. Alrighty, nice and heavy. Um, make them in, in multiple different colors. Like I said, this is just one that I know works on a couple of the streams I fish in. Um, I I tie these in a, uh, in a in a in a kind of an olive green and a chartreuse green. I also tie one with a little bit of an orange tinge to it. Um, it just depends on on the on the uh, the bugs in your river. So, okay, hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, give her a thumbs up. Uh, if you subscribed, awesome. If you haven't, please consider doing so. See you guys on the next time video. Thailand's everyone. Mm -hmm.